Okay. I greet you, our viewer and our listener. I thank God because of this day, because he has brought us together so that we can share his word. Because God uh, connects his people or brings his people together, having something he wants to talk to them. And God would like us to understand his word. So today, as you are reasoning, my topic that I'm going to bring to us today is about authentic Christianity. And when I say authentic Christianity, of course, you understand that I'm meaning that there are other Christianities that are not authentic. And, uh, and uh, authentic Christianity is not bought, is not out of works, is not out of what we do, good, is not of our trying, it is about what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross. There is a song, I will not sing it, but I might just uh, talk about it a little bit. It says, Amazing Grace. Because authentic Christianity is out of grace. It is a free gift. And that song goes like this. Because you might want to sing it even yourself. As I have sung it, and uh, it has blessed me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wreck like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. That singer was confident of what Jesus did for him. Because Jesus uh, died on the cross. He shed his righteous blood to redeem us. We are saved. We are his children. He was the lamb that John the Baptist was talking about when he said, when he saw Jesus and pointed at him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He was pointing at Jesus. He was not pointing at himself because he was uh, the leader or the pastor or uh, John the Baptist who was baptizing. He knew he was a voice in the wilderness just making sure that people prepare their way, the way for the Lord that is coming. And so he showed them the Lord. Even today, we need to see the Lord. We need to show the people that we are reading the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that he is yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. So uh, today, as I have told you, I want us to talk about authentic Christianity. And before I venture into uh, what we will talk, one, two, three, let me read the word, because we were lost, if not for the amazing grace that, Jesus, that God came to seek for us and gave his only son. To, he did everything. We did nothing. So we were lost, like the prodigal son that we know very much about, that he was lost. So I want to read that one about the prodigal son, and then we look at what authentic Christianity is all about. Today, because uh, I might talk for some time about authentic Christianity, I just want to do the introduction today about authentic Christianity. So when I, I want to read from the book of Luke, chapter number 15, verses 10 to, uh, to 14. Just those few verses so that we can look at one, two, three things and then we go ahead. Listen as I read the word from the NIV Bible. This is what it is saying. 
In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. So I won't lead far than that, because this is a, a, a story that we know very well. I know you might listen and you know about this story. It is about a man who had two sons, and he was a wealthy man. So this young man asked his father, Daddy, give me my share of wealth, because even if I stay here, finally I will get it, because it is mine. It was his right. He, this guy knew his rights. So he asked Daddy, instead of put, keeping it for me, that you will give me in the future, give me now so that I can go and do business so that my wealth can increase. And uh, his daddy did not want to, call, to complain uh, or to, uh, to delay him there. So he gave him the wealth that belonged to him. And this young son took on the journey and went to a far country as we have read here. And he went and squandered his wealth. He thought he's going to make uh, make wealth and become rich, but he squandered his wealth. Until finally, as we know the story, he was hungry, he was naked, he did not have food, he suffered a lot until he came back to his senses. That's what the Bible says. The, 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 and then there it says he came back to his senses after he suffered a lot. It is not good to go very far and to suffer so much uh, before you make a decision. But this is what happened. You know, the Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful more than anything else. So his heart deceived him that he's going to be rich and wealthy. But that did not happen. Instead, he became poor until one day he decided and said, in my father's house, there are servants who eat and cross and they stay well. And I'm suffering here. I will go, although I got my wealth, I'll go and ask my dad to make me like one of the servants so that even if I will not get anything else, at least I can be eating and sleeping well, other than sleeping among pigs and suffering. And it is good to come to one's senses. That is what he did. And he went back. And he was embraced by his father. Just as God embraces us, even as we wonder when we come back, even as you have wondered when you came back, even as those that wonder that they come back, because of the amazing grace, God loves us more. It is like we never did anything. When he cleanses us, when he receives us back, it's like we did not do anything to him. Because we are variable. The children of God are variable in his eyes. Just as this son, although he squandered everything, his daddy did not think about money and everything that he squandered, he found his son that was far away and it's like he was dead and now he is alive. So when he came back, he received him back. The big boy may not be happy, but daddy received him back. So Jesus, when Jesus was talking this parable, he said in verse, uh, in verse 10, when I, when I started that, in the same way, Jesus was talking about a repentant sinner 
And this boy was a repentant sinner. He was coming back to his dad. How many times have you, have you ran away and repented and God forgives you? I remember what Martin Luther said about repentance. When Martin Luther was writing the, verse, the 95 verses that he wrote, he said, repentance is not a one-time thing. It is continuous in our life. It continues in our life. In authentic Christianity, repentance is a continuous thing so that your relationship with your father can remain. So Jesus said, in the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God, of a one sinner who repents. So, looking at that story of this guy here, of this young man who went and squandered uh, his wealth, I want us to think where we are. Because I have said that his father received him back and did not count anything to him. It's like he did nothing. So he received him back. And it was so good. He made a party for him. He gave him new clothes. He was, yeah, he was given a ring. And it was wonderful to have back his son. This is what God wants us to be in his house. When, when we were lost, God gave his only begotten son. He made a party. It's like slaughtering a bull. Allowing his only begotten son to be sacrificed. To, to be put on the cross. And to die. And to be buried. But, and, but to raise on the third day. That is giving a sacrifice for us. Giving whatever he could give. So authentic Christianity is about God embracing us. It's not about us doing things. It's not about us giving money. It's about, not about people doing their things uh, to buy salvation. Because if they bought, if anybody, the way of the people bought salvation, they would boast that I bought it cash. I bought it with my money. It is me. So boasting is nowhere. Even doing good works is nowhere. Even preaching is nowhere. It is believing in what Jesus Christ did on the cross. So today, when I look at authentic Christianity, and when I, um, and when I talk about, uh, I look about uh, uh, Martin Luther, I, because I mentioned Martin Luther, who, who was a reformist in his time, and he read the Bible. And especially when I look at him, I see that this guy read the book of Galatians. Because if you need freedom, you need to read the book of Galatians very well, very well. And when you read it, you will understand that salvation is a free gift. And God's intention is that we be free. And even Jesus himself wanted us to be free. And he said... Take my yoke upon yourselves and learn of me because I am humble in heart. Put your roads away and take the yoke of Christ. Salvation is not a burden. It is a gift. It's a free gift. And it's so heavy. So I'm, to I'm talking about authentic Christianity. Authentic Christianity is not about houses with a cross, it is not about uh, doing things because even as houses, we have very many houses. At least, if you move from one church to another one, <laughs> you, you may not even go for 30 miles, I, I mean 30, 30 uh, that, uh, 100 meters. You may find a, a church here and with a cross and another one there and another one there, before one mile you get another one, so churches are many. Teaching different things. But Jesus, when I look at Jesus, Jesus was teaching about the kingdom of God. 
about the kingdom of God. And he was teaching the good news. What we need is not many different houses and many different doctrines. We need to teach the word of God, the kingdom of God, and, and salvation, which is by grace. It's a gift. What you do, if there is anything that you can do or I can do, is just to accept the gift. When you accept the gift, then you got it. You got it. But teaching the people from one church here and another one there and another one there, people teach different things so that people can see you have something special, you have something special, but the, G the church of Jesus Christ is not a house. It is the people that are called, the called out ones are the church. The church is not a building. It is the called out one, out, the called out ones. Wherever they are, whoever they are, you may not know them. You may not know them because they are not together. They are all over the group. The Catholic Church, the universal church, is what comprises the authentic Christians. So there are many. You cannot say this is an authentic Christian. This is another, this is not. Because Jesus Christ knows those that are his. And he knows them by name. But of course, he also said, you shall know them by their fruits. So authentic Christians are known by their fruits. Not by doing different things. When I was, uh, when I was in school, and I was doing biblical studies and theology, I learned about two very important words, and they have been important in my life. Exegesis and exegesis. Exegesis and exegesis. Because exegesis, you read the word of God, and you, you look at what is in the word of God. But people today don't want to do that. In authentic Christianity, you have to look at the word of God. I've seen people tell me, nah, yes, they, you, they read one, you read one word and tell people, look at me, cross the Bible. No, no. In authentic Christianity, you look at what the Bible is saying because it is the authority for those that are authentic Christians. A sense is that even if you read something in the Bible, you take your things from wherever. You, I speak my things. And I tell them, I, I, I tell people a, a certain story. Stories are good to tell. But preach the word. Exegesis is, is taking what is in the word of God and bringing it to the hearers. Not pre, pre, bringing things from everywhere. So authentic Christianity is a gift that no one can earn other than receiving by faith. All are lost and come short of the glory of God, like the lost son. But due to the word of God, the authentic word of God, then we come back to God. We come back to our Father, and He hears us. So authentic Christians know how to come back to their Father. And they know that we came to our Father. You must understand that this, this guy who asked his things and went away and squandered his, his property and came back, he was embraced because he had genuine or authentic repentance. People have gone and left their parents and they have gone forever. Even there are people that have come abroad and they don't feel like uh, they can go back because maybe they, they had conflict with people and they don't want to see them again. 
Even parents, even children have ran away from home and they never want to come back. But this prodigal son here, this son here, because he had genuine or authentic repentance, he said, yes, I will be ashamed, but I would rather go and face my dad and become a servant so that I can be one of them. And even if they will not give me anything, at least I can eat. So this is what I want to say. That irrespective of who we are, man is ima made in, in the image of God. And that is why God has ma made us variable. God values us. He values everybody. Don't look at people and think that one is bad, that one is bad. Don't be judgmental. God can change anything. God can change any man. If he changed this guy who ran away and squandered everything, he can, even today he can change you. You may think that you are lost, but if you listen to what we are saying, God's word, and about authentic Christianity, you will not feel that you have done so much. You will have or make a genuine repentance like this son, and you will have genuine or authentic Christianity. A gen when I look at the Christians, when they were called Christians for the first time, uh, where they were called Christians in Antioch the first time, it was not a, a beautiful thing to be called a Christian because uh, it was a mockery. It was a mockery. Because they followed Jesus. They did like Jesus. Uh, people those times, they did not think that Jesus is so important. So they were, it was a mockery. It was a mockery. But they were called the Christians because they did like Christ, they walked like Christ, they behaved like Christ. That means they were transformed. Authentic Christianity is transformative. For example, we may talk about somebody like Apostle Paul. When he was called or when he met Christ on the way to Damascus, in himself, he was a murderer. Just like this guy who ran away. He, had, he thought he is doing good work to God, but he was murdering the very children of God. He was killing them, thinking that he is doing service to God. But Jesus Christ, who is not a respecter of persons, came down and met uh, Saul on the way to Damascus to go and cause havoc there to the Christians, to the people of the way. And he was knocked down. And he, his eyes did not see. It was hard for him. You know there's salvation. Salvation can be of two different types. One, that you can be dragged from where you are. Like this young man here, who was dragged from where he was squandering his money and came back home. That is salvation. Just like that one of Paul, who was who was who fell down and he and he was and his life was changed and he was transformed that's a kind of salvation but it is salvation he got it he got it paul got saved although although it was hard with there's another kind of salvation that even timothy <laughs> when I look at when I look at Timothy, when I look at Timothy, I wonder. Timothy, the Bible says that he was brought up by his grandmother and his mother, and these were God-fearing parents. So, from grandmother to mother to 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 Timothy, so he was brought up like that. And that's another kind of salvation, yeah. But. He still needs repentance, although he's brought up very well. He has not killed anybody. He has not murdered anybody. He has not stolen anything. But it's a kind of salvation. But he need, we need 
salvation. We need Christ. We need to be saved. We need to be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the only way to authentic Christianity. It's not by being good. You can be good because it is good to be good. And anybody, even people who are not saved, who don't claim to be saved or don't claim to be godly people, sometimes they do very good things, even more than, we, than other people can do. For example, there's another person who is, uh, we call Cornelius. Cornelius, even before he was saved, he was a prayerful, he was giving alms and he was doing good things. And he was also praying. But he did not know the way. God had to send, to, God had to send uh, Peter to go and talk to Cornelius so that he can be saved. And that's what happened. And he, he became an authentic Christianity. And he, he was transformed. And life went on. So I just want to say, even to ourselves today, that we are, you are, don't think you are very far. If you hear this word, if you hear God's word, and you yield yourself, and you avail yourself, and you want the repentance, as I said, <laughs> that, that uh, uh, Martin Luther talks about repentance, that, not, not, that is not a day's repentance. That you are told to raise up your hand, and then we pray, and then not that one. It is good. But you need another one because we are not perfect. Authentic Christians know that they are not perfect. We need God every hour. We need God every time. So, as I told you, I want to say that church is not a building. Church is not a building like this. I am here, a church with a cross. Church is the called out ones. The people that are called they are the genuine, they are the genuine, they are the genuine Christians. They are called, those that are separated by, by Christ, by believing in what Christ did on the cross, by what Christ did on the cross. So in authentic Christianity, my friend and my brother and my sister, the Bible says, and you can read for yourself, because I said that, uh, because I said about authentic Christianity, is about reading the word of God, which, which when I was in college, I was told by my teacher that, uh, that the Bible or the scripture, when the Bible uh, speaks, when the Bible shouts, we shout. When the Bible whispers, we whisper. And when the Bible is, the word of God is silent, we keep silent. So I just want to tell you that the word of God about authentic Christianity is shouting. It talks many times in the Bible. Like now you can read John 8, 36. And what does it say? I don't have time to read, but let me tell you what it says. It says, if the Son sets you free, you will be free, and free indeed. So, you, may, you can be free, and free indeed, if the Son sets you free. But if you think you will be free, or I think I am free because of attending a church or doing good things, then I'm deceiving myself. It is either you are freed by the Son of God who sets you free, and you are free indeed, or else you are not free. And now this is, the, this is where the problem comes. Because if you are not set free by the Son of God, and you are set free by attending a certain religion or denomination, then they will put their roads on you. You will be abandoned that carries roads instead of having the freedom that Christ would you like you to enjoy. I like I like freedom. Like me, I like freedom. I enjoy freedom. 
And I know many people like freedom because even in, in our countries, when our countries, like my country, Kenya, when we were we did not have freedom, our our fathers, our grandfathers, me, I never saw my grandfather because he died fighting for freedom. Freedom is precious. And Jesus fought for our freedom. He fought until he, he died to redeem us. He shed his blood until we are now free. In Kenya, I am free because our fathers and our grandfathers fought for the freedom. We never fought for it. We received it because they shed their blood. They fought against Britain and we got freedom. So here in this instance, if the son set you free and you know he died and he shed his blood so that once you are, you, you are washed by that blood, once you are washed from that blood, by that blood, you are free and free indeed. So, but let me tell you, that works, good works for a Christian is very good. For an authentic Christian, good works are very good. We are saved so that we can do good works. The authentic Christians, we are not saved to, because we have done good works. But for an authentic Christian, because he knows who he is, and he knows what God did for him, and he knows what Christ did for him, then in his life, you will find him doing good. Because still the Bible says that if you know how to do good and you don't do it, then you sin. We do good not to earn salvation. We do good because we are saved. We do good because God has made us the way we are. And let me tell you, but if you want to be saved by doing good, it is like taking a cart. In, in my country, we have, we have donkeys. And donkeys pull carts. So, salvation of works is like pulling a donkey, putting a, a cart before the donkey. It doesn't work that way. The donkey pulls the cart. You have to put your road, your luggage in the cart, and then you tie it behind the donkey so that the donkey can pull it. Even salvation is like that. It is, by, it is through grace. And then work comes behind. So, <clears throat> if I can also tell you another word in the New Testament still. If you read John chapter 3 verses 14, 1st John chapter 3 verse 14. I will, I will not read from the Bible. I will tell you what it says. It says this. We have, we have passed from death to life. So let me tell you. For authentic Christianity, it is either you have passed from death to life or you are still dead in your sins and trespasses because you are not forgiven. So, the Bible is saying, we have passed from death to life. You, you either believe it, or then you are not. But the will of Jesus Christ is that we have everlasting life because he is both in the life and the resurrection. John 13, 34. I told you the, uh, that scripture interprets scripture. The John 13, 34 says that the word knows we are genuine disciples. The world knows that we are genuine disciples when we love one another, just as Christ loved us. They will know that you are a genuine Christian if you love one another. So, another word I just want to leave it to you is John 10, verse 11 and 17. It's about good shepherd who gave life for the sheep. 
take his yoke. It is right. It is good for you. I'm giving you some verses that are very important for, uh, for, for, for genuine Christianity. Romans 8.1 We are either in Jesus Christ and so not condemned or condemned already. Because the Bible says that those, are, those that are in Christ, they are not condemned. They have passed from death to life. But those that are not in Christ, they are already condemned. So, for genuine Christians, for genuine Christianity, genuine Christians have passed from death to life. Not because of what they have done, but because of what Christ did on the cross. And when he did everything on the cross, he said, it is finished. When he was crucified on the cross, he said, it is finished. So he finished all. There's nobody else who can come and shed blood to cleanse me or cleanse you. There's nobody else who can come and uh, sacrifice a goat. Uh, now, nowadays, I hear people talking about going back, going back uh, to do sacrifices and what they are doing. But I, what I believe is that the sacrifice God gave for his only begotten son, it is enough and no blood of a bull, no blood of a goat, no blood of a sheep, and no blood of a dove or a chicken can cleanse anybody. That is done. It is only Christ's blood that qualifies to cleanse everybody that comes to, to him. Believing that God gave his son so that we can, when we call upon his name, he can save us. So, uh, it is just like Moses. You know people here, we face challenges and many things. Just like the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness. Just to quote a word from the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible. And when, uh, when they provoked God and uh, and there were snakes in the wilderness. Whoever believed what God said, that when you are beaten by the snake, just look up to the, to the bronze snake. And once you look up there, you will, you will be healed. And when they looked to the snake, they were healed. It is like that. Even today, that bronze snake was an example of Jesus Christ who was to be crucified later after many, many centuries, after many years, uh, who would be crucified on the cross so that when we look at him, we can receive salvation. Salvation which is free. You know, the Israelites used to sacrifice and to give animals and to, uh, to shed blood of animals and they would be they would uh, be forgiven for an year, but next year they are still in the same thing. Or you can even sacrifice a sheep or a goat. And then after that, tomorrow you, did, you do the same thing that you did. But the blood of Jesus is not like that. It is saves and saves. It cleanses and cleanses. So I thank God uh, because he cleansed us. And we are righteous, not because of what we do, but we are clean because of what Jesus did for us. So, as I said, when I was starting, uh, when I was starting, I sang a song about amazing grace. And it went like this. I'll still finish with it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wreck like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. God bless you.